Hey there, welcome to this video all about Koala Sampler and the SP404 Mark II. Now I wanted to do a sort of side-by-side -side comparison video here, go through a bunch of stuff, everything from like the initial cost all the way through to the features, kind of deep dive into them both a little bit, just so that if you're thinking about which one will suit you most, this just might be a helpful video for you. Now it's going to be quite long-winded because there's a lot to talk about, but what I'll do is I'll put some time codes into the YouTube description, and that way you'll be able to obviously skip through to the part that you're most interested in. So let's get started with an introduction to both of these. So the first thing I want to talk about is what do each of these items do? Now the SP404 is really simple, it is a dedicated hardware sampler and its sole purpose is to make beats, it doesn't do anything other than that. It doesn't have any internet capabilities or anything, not that I've seen so far. It also stands alone, doesn't really require computer support. You might need it to put files onto your SD card, you might need it, you know, a laptop or something like that. Of course you can sample in using some external equipment, but in terms of being able to use it and get playing with it, you really just need you know, some cables to a set of monitors to some speakers or a set of headphones and you're kind of good to go. Now with Koala, what we're talking about really is a piece of software or an application that runs upon a capable device. And in this case, the capable device that I'm using is an iPad, but of course that could be an iPhone, it could be an iOS device of some sort. And so it's slightly different because this is a multi-purpose device, especially the iPad in this case for me, because I use this for my video editing I do a bunch of artwork on here. So that's how I look at the differences between the two of them. This is a piece of software within a device that I use, and this is just purely for, you know, making beats. Now, they both have really good communities and lots of support. The main difference is being that obviously the SP404 is made by Roland. That's a big company and they do the updates and they do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and there's good support there. Koala is the same story in terms of you're going to get plenty of support and plenty of updates. However, you have to bear in mind that from what I've read about this, it's kind of one guy's sort of passion project here. And he does all the, you know, updates and he's working on this himself. So, you know, whether or not you get more frequent updates and things because this is done by a team of people and, you know, uh, this guy works kind of standalone, doesn't really make any difference. He's never let us down with Koala. It's an amazing piece of software uh, and I can't can't, you know, um, big that guy up enough for the amount of work and effort that he puts into making this thing so good. But I want to do, a, you know, a full comprehensive overview of like, what's the difference between these two. So this is, you know, designed by Roland, which I can only assume is a massive company with plenty of like engineers and stuff. And this is like, yeah, this is like one guy kind of doing the DIY route. But you will find uh, communities for both, hardcore fans for both. And if we just do a little thing here, just at the time of making this video, this is currently updated to version 3.0 and Koala is updated to version 1.4071. So yeah, we're talking about the current versions. Koala's latest release generally was the the, uh, the EQ function that is currently open on the screen here. And there were a whole bunch of things added to the 3.0 update in the SP404. Now that's one other thing to mention before we move on to the next section. I wouldn't have bought the SP404 until the version three update came out because when I did some research on whether I wanted to buy one of these, at the time of release, there were a lot of things it didn't do that you know Koala did. So this version 3.0 update was the first time where I looked at it and thought, actually, okay, it's a a point where the SP is very usable, looks really good, uh, and that's when I decided to kind of, you know, open my wallet and get involved. So that leads us nicely onto cost. So let's talk about cost next. So the next thing we want to talk about here is cost, because of course that's, you know, everyone's got a budget and depends on what you want and what you've got your heart set on. But I want to do cost comparison and talk about that again in quite a broad sort of view. Now the SP404 is the easiest simply because it costs what it costs. Now, depending on where you are in the world, in the UK, this is currently around £450. It goes up a little bit, can be slightly cheaper. They've got really good resale value. So if you buy one second hand, you're still looking to pay around 400 and by the time I got a little discount on this one. It wasn't worth buying a secondhand one because it was so close. I'd rather just have a fully brand new one out of the box uh, for the difference. But, you know, if you want to try this out and buy it and then think in a week or two, I don't like it, I'm going to sell it, you're going to get most of your money back. So keep that in mind. The resale on these is really good. Um, when we talk about Koala, it's slightly different in the sense
sense that Koala, of course, is an application that runs on a capable device. In my case, my device is very expensive. It's a fancy iPad, but my iPad is a multifunction device, as I've said. So I'm not just making beats on here. I'm doing my video editing. I'm doing a lot of day to day tasks on there. So as much as this is, you know, a thousand pound iPad, that cost is split because obviously it does multiple things. Um, if you have a phone or a capable device of running Koala, then the startup cost is as little as, of course, like five pounds for the app, five dollars, wherever you are, in the, you know, in the world. So keep that in mind. I think a lot of people who own Koala already and have some kind of device and they run it, they're probably considering whether they think that, you know, this seems like the big expenditure then, you know, it's 400, you know, 450. It's quite a lot of money. Uh, that's going to be the big consideration. And hopefully by the time I go through this video and compare features and do a bunch of things, it might give you more of an indication as to which way, you know, you'd like to sway, whether you think it'd be worth, you know, shelling out a bit more money and getting one of these as well. But keep that in mind. Now, in terms of associated costs, this is pretty standalone. In order to use it straight out of the box, it comes with some samples built into it. So really, if you had a set of headphones, you could just, you know, put some batteries in uh, or use the AC adapter that it comes with and get started. You need some way of getting some audio out. So you might want to fork out for some cables, some monitors. You may already have those uh, if you're doing music production already. But keep those little costs in mind as well. Is it a set of headphones, whatever it is? It requires an SD card for the samples that goes in the side here. Those are pretty cheap these days. And I think you can put up to a terabyte SD card in here now, which is amazing. So you can get plenty on there. Koala is the same kind of story. It's going to, you know, vary depending on your needs. Do you want to use an external controller with it, a MIDI controller? Do you have one already? Do you want a USB-C hub like I use that allows me to charge it and plug in my MIDI controllers and do audio output all at the same time? The one I use, I've said in another video, cost me about 40 quid. So, you know, there's a cost associated there. Uh, again, what's it linking to? To, do you need speakers? Do you need, you know, just a set of headphones, whatever. So those are the kind of broad spectrum costs. And as I said, Koala is a little bit more complicated because you may already own a device that you can run it on. The only one thing I will mention on top of that is that what is the user experience like between a phone or an iPad? And I have to admit that using the iPad with the big screen in Koala, particularly for like sequencing, uh, being able to come in and draw these in and zoom in and all that kind of thing, you can do it on the iPhone, but it can be fiddly if you've got big hands big fingers starting to put in your, your sequences and do all of that kind of stuff on a really small screen I found to be a little bit tricky doesn't mean I don't do it I still play on the bus on my iPhone from time to time with like Koala but keep that again in mind if you want this exact experience like I'm showing you here with the nice iPad and the big screen if you don't own that already then that's where the cost comes in so yeah that's a good look at cost now let's uh, take a quick look at portability so let's take a look at the portability of both of these items and just the units themselves. Now, again, it's kind of, this is like a bit of an apples and oranges comparison because of course the you know, they're designed for different purposes. This again, multi-use, this uh, dedicated hardware sampler. But if we think about it in terms of what are your needs, what do you want to do with it? If I'm honest, the iPad very rarely leaves the studio. I'm, I don't think it's delicate as such. It's in a good, strong case. I'm not too worried. I've dropped it a couple of times, uh, luckily not damaged it, but it it is a big sheet of glass on the front here essentially and would I want to take it out to a club to do like a live gig or something like that uh, without fear of it getting damaged I'm not 100% sure the SP404 on the other hand I do feel is more rugged it's got a little screen that again could get scratched up it's got buttons that could get you know knocked and damaged but in a suitable like carry case and gig bag I think this would probably be I don't know just probably a little tougher overall and of course the you know this sort of designed to be slightly different things the iPad of course is designed to be nice and thin and just sit in your hand well and this is designed to be plunked on a desk and you bash away at the pads uh so in terms of the units themselves that's kind of how i would look at them this i would say was a little bit more kind of gig friendly for taking it out and about of course you can take your ipad out and about but i am always a little bit more worried about that if it's a thing about like koala then of course koala can be used on your phone it can be used on other devices so i'm not so worried about taking my phone i take like, you know take my phone everywhere it's in a, again it's in a good case in case i drop it but if if it, we're talking about the iPad, then yeah, I'd say this was slightly more delicate. In terms of overall size, you can see the SP in comparison to a 12.9 iPad, not a lot in it, actually kind of similar size. And actually the weight's not too unsimilar. This is definitely lighter than I thought it was going to be, but it does feel rugged. It's got, you know, I think it's a metal front on it. It might be plastic, but it's cold. So I kind of assumed it was metal. Obviously the iPad's thinner. You could put that into a laptop like bag and all that kind of stuff and carry it around. The thing to remember again between 
the SP and the iPad is what else do you need to bring? Do you need to bring your USB hub with it? Are you trying to use a MIDI controller with this? Which again, you can use a MIDI controller with the SP as well, but anything else that you need to bring into that gig bag to like take it out and about would be considerations. But I would definitely say this was probably more user-friendly for taking out and about in the streets and you know, not worrying about it too much. In terms of what we've got, we've already kind of discussed the ins and outs a little bit. Uh, as I said, the SP404 stands alone. We've got inputs and outputs on the back. We've got a USB-C. And actually, if you've got both of these and you want to use them together, it's really cool because you can simply put a USB-C cable between the two and, you know, uh, swap samples between and muck about and do a bunch of other things. The one thing it doesn't do, which is a bit disappointing, is that this, uh, the SP404 won't charge the iPad. I was kind of hoping that when the USB-C was plugged in, it would charge the iPad and you can do that. And that's why I'm currently putting the audio through the iPad into the SP404 via the actual quarter inch line in jacks on the back because I want to be able to charge the iPad at the same time. So obviously I don't have to worry about it. So whilst we're talking about the look and feel of both of these devices, we can talk about customization. Now the SP404 has the ability to bring in your own logos, your own opening screens as you boot this up. You can set custom screen savers and do a bunch of other stuff as well. On the Roland website, you have the option to download a template for the faceplate, which you can obviously print off some custom skins, you know, put stickers on and do that kind of thing. Now with Koala, we have a bunch of customization options as well, mainly to do with what we do with the background skin. And as you can see, I've created like this uh, fake SP404 skin for mine. And also we have the option if we go into settings, we can go into extras and you can apply like a background effect. So you can have the background kind of move around and do some like kaleidoscope effects and things like that. So there are a couple of different customization options available to you to try and make each of these devices your own. Not too much else to say about the units themselves. In terms of aesthetics, I'll be honest, the iPad's a beautiful device that's, you know, it's designed to be thin and light and held in your hand. In terms of something that draws me in to want to make beats, I am going to say the SP does that a little bit better simply because who doesn't love a little sampler and real pads? And again, we need to talk a little bit about what do you want? What do you like the feel of? Doing this on the screen is absolutely no problem at all. It doesn't feel bad. But do I like doing this more with this rotary knob here? Yes, I do. I don't know what it is about, you know, the tactile feel of a sampler, actual pads and buttons and yeah, I don't know. I just think this is generally quite a sexy looking little like sampler device makes me want to get on there and make beats. Koala doesn't, but not because it's bad in any way. And of course I've created this skin to give myself the like the feeling of it being more like that. But you know, that you'll see that time and time again. There's definitely something about real pads and a real thing. Now you can of course plug in a MIDI controller to Koala and have pads and have keys to play around with and get it all to, you know, track. So you can get that kind of feel, but one, it requires the extra piece of equipment. And two, I don't think even with the best MIDI mapping inside of here, you would ever be able to have a controller do everything so that you could completely work inside Koala without touching the screen. And of course, the SP404 is kind of designed to be its own little, you know, universe with all the buttons and the knobs and everything else. So again, in terms of what do you need? So I've made loads of beats on Koala. I really enjoy it. Sometimes that's all I want is that experience of sitting with the iPad in my lap and just making the beats. There'll be times where I wouldn't think this was as comfy to sit in your lap and this would stay on the desk. So again, keep that in mind as you're thinking about, uh, you know, your choices here. This is definitely hardware, buttons and pads. This is digital. It's all finger and feel. And I'll talk more about sequencing and some of the other options inside of here. But when we're talking about that in terms of a difference, there's definitely going to be part of your workflow, part of your um, own process where you have to decide is this kind of thing swiping along with a finger quicker for you or coming into like this where you have these, you know, rotary buttons to manipulate your samples. I think by the time you get used to both of them, it will just become like, you know, second nature to you how to use either. I think they'll both be quite speedy, but things to consider. Do you prefer this kind of thing or this? Anyway, let's now move on to the features. So the first feature I want to look at is the user interface for both devices. Now, they are very, very similar. Again, I understand the kind of comparison between Koala and the SP404, uh, because if we look at the sort of general layout, there are a lot of similarities here. We have like a sample page. Now, of course, when we're inside a Koala, we kind of just use our three main tabs to skip along to the places we're looking for. It's kind of a similar story with the SP404. When it kind of boots up, you're in sample page, like, you know, your sample page like you have in Koala. And if I press the pattern select, 
we're essentially skipping over into like here in Koala where we've got like our sequences. But rather than having sequence windows, we have pads instead where our kind of like our patterns or our sequences are stored. And then we have one more tab in Koala that we flick over to get to our effects and we can, you know, mess around with those inside of here. Whereas the effects are kind of set at the top of the unit in terms of the SP404. So we can, you know, trigger all of our effects inside of here. But if we come back out of pattern select for a second. Next, if we're staying on like the sample page, we have this edit window inside of Koala. So if we've got a wave file here, we can come in and we can tweak it and we can do all of that. And it's kind of across the top here in a visual way. It's the same story with the SP404. We need to be on a pad, of course, and we just need to have our start and end window open so that we can skip through and get like a visual look at all of our waveforms for our, you know, our pads. And when we want to tweak them instead of using our finger, we have these rotary controls here and we have the ability to zoom using two fingers on Koala. And we have the ability to zoom using this little like uh, rotary knob thing here. Uh, this push and enter button lets us take a closer look at our waveform. Uh, and it's clever because when we shift along here, it will zoom to whichever point you've been sort of tweaking. So if it's the start point, it's going to zoom to the start point. And if we, you know, play with the end point, it then zooms to that end point when it comes in. It's very clever stuff. But again, very similar in terms of the layout. When we look overall, we've got some volume and uh, some pitch, a little bit of panning that we can do here. Same deal with the SP404. We just need to be over into this screen instead where we can adjust our pitch and our general overall volume. And if we hit shift, we can do, you know, our panning as well. So again, very, very similar. We've got 16 pads. We technically have 17 pads on here because you can use the sub pad on the SP404, but typically 16 and 16. We get four banks on the Koala, uh, you know, inside of Koala, and we get 10 banks inside of the SP404. I've never managed to use anywhere near four banks on Koala, so I'm certainly probably never going to use anywhere near as many as 10, but that's what's available, so plenty of options. In terms of the pads and things, you can stack them, you can copy them, you can rearrange them. All of that is very, very similar. The only times I'm going to point something out is if I think that the workflow is easier on one versus the other. Talk a little bit about that, but I'm going to dive more into the features as we kind of go through. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the sort of general overview you access your banks here and of course we access our banks on these buttons wouldn't say there was much between the two of them there so that generally takes care of the user interface now let's dive into some of the individual features so the next feature I want to look at is resampling inside of both devices now in sample page and like just working with like pads on audio resampling is very similar between the two in Koala of course you can hold and as long as you're in resample mode, it's going to record any audio that you play from your other pads, resample it to that pad. Similar story on the SP, you just hit record. It'll ask me where I want to record the audio to. I can choose a pad and all of that kind of thing. Very straightforward. The problem comes that when we go into sequencing with Koala, so we have our patterns and our sequence windows here. Let's say we want to resample a pattern or a sequence down to a pad. Let's say this first sequence here inside of Koala was 106 BPM and it was two bars. I simply just go in, press resample loop, and Koala does it all for me, nice and simple. My two bar 106 BPM loop is now baked down to a piece of audio on a pad. I can loop it, I can play around and do stuff with it. The problem with the SP404 is that at the moment, and I say at the moment because I feel like it's an updatable uh, thing that will fix this issue, is that it's very funny about resampling patterns. So we go, instead of being on the sample page here, we go into sequence, here we're in the sample page. We hit pattern select and instead of the sequences, we've got our patterns that are on our pads. Same thing, essentially. So I want to resample this. You know, I've only got one pattern here. So I want to resample this and I'll do this without audio. I would just do resample, which is fine. It asks me to choose a destination and that depends on wherever you've got a free pad and the free pads light up. Again, nice and simple. It make, makes sense. So I can choose this one. That's going to be my destination pad. The first step is that I have to turn on this end snap because I want this to be a perfect loop. Uh, again, whatever the project is set to, say it's 90 BPM and I want two bars or whatever it, you know, the, the pattern is, I want it to be a perfect loop. So I have to press this little start and end here where it tells me end snap turn on. I'll do that a couple of times just because it's quick, flashes on and off quite quickly. 
I'd want to turn end snap on. Again, if that made it work and it was perfect, wouldn't bother me. It's not a big step. However, this end snap mode seems to have a couple of issues here. And so when you resample inside of the SP, what it does, instead of just kind of doing it automatically and baking it down inside of Koala, it lets you kind of choose the length. And again, I don't find that a bad thing. I think that's kind of cool because say my pattern here is one bar, but actually I want to record eight bars of it, turn it into like an eight bar thing. That's fine. It kind of does it in real time. When I press my pad to start up, which is what it's waiting for, it finds your beginning point perfectly because it's waiting for me to tell it when to start recording. So that again is fine. But when it comes to the end, it requires me to stop it when I've had enough of that recording, but it's very hit and miss. Now with end snap on, you'd feel that as long as it gets anywhere close to, you know, like a bar length or however it kind of measures it, it would cut it perfectly and you would be sorted. But unfortunately, it is an issue currently with the SP404. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does. Let's say there's one bars worth on here. So I'm just gonna count the, you know, the four measures, one, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna hit stop to record that pattern. Should be resampled over to my other pad. What happens a lot of the time is that it's either too short or it's too long. So it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And also, if you watch again, other users doing this, some people are saying, well, you need to let it go to the first like measure of the second bar. So it go one, two, three, four, back to one, then kind of stop it there and it will work it out that it's short. It does on occasion, but a lot of the time it fails miserably. And I find that incredibly frustrating because I don't mind pressing a couple of buttons to do a couple of extra steps, particularly as I said, because it gives me some choice to make my pattern longer but when koala does it so easily that becomes really frustrating and there's no reason why this sp shouldn't have the similar function to just be able to crop that pattern that resampled loop to a perfect bpm however you want to set it up um, and i think it will come or fingers crossed it will come in a you know a future update hopefully you know not in the too distant future so that's resampling and that's the reason i wanted to talk about that feature one so that you've got an overview of how it works but also that currently i think there's a little bit of a flaw in the uh, the system of the way the SP404 handles resampling patterns. Anyway, let's move on. So the next thing I want to talk about here is sequencing in both devices. Now, if we take a look, we've got a very similar thing. We go to our sequence page and we can see our like sequence windows here. When we're in the SP, we've got our sort of, you know, first sample page like it is here. And then when we want to look at our patterns or our sequences, we press the pattern select button and then we have these pads instead of these like windows. Now, the first thing to mention straight off the bat is that Koala is a more visual hands-on way of dealing with sequences. So when you open up a sequence here, I can physically come in and put my MIDI notes in and shift them around and pull them off the grid and quantize and a whole bunch of options. So Koala's got a lot going on for it in terms of sequencing. It's more traditional like a DAW because as I said, you can control your MIDI notes as the way you put them in. And we've got all of these like undo functions here so we can get rid of it. And we can come back at any point and edit these, uh, you know, these sequences. Now the SP404, I would say kind of loses out a little bit here. I think Koala gives you more options, as I said, to kind of undo mistakes with the SP. So we have the same thing, essentially, we've got patterns and sequences that we record, but we don't get any visual representation of that like this. There's no way to physically like change the input of it or not in this sense. So let's do, let's go into pattern mode here. Let's say I wanted to create a new one, do record, and it's going to ask me where I want my new pattern, my new sequence to be. That's all nice and straightforward. I click on here and what I get is this information to start off before we start recording. So we've got BPM that we can shift. We can change the bar length and we can change the strength of, uh, you know, uh, how much quantize we want to apply to our, you know, our slices, our pattern. Now that's all very good. We also get an extra feature in here, which is a, a step sequencer. And I'm going to cover that a little bit later on. Uh, but that's a cool function of the SP404 that the Koala doesn't have. But this is how we essentially start off a pattern. Now I'm going to record a pattern without any audio, but just so that you can kind of see what happens because you kind of have to be in recording mode in order to access some of the other features. So we've chosen to, you know, have a new pattern starting here. I can hit record. You can choose, I think, whether you want it to start when you start playing pads or you can have a count in like this. Once the counting is done, it is recording through. And just like Koala, when I hit the record button inside of Koala on sequence, 
it just plays through and plays through. And you can have the same thing, accounting before and all that kind of stuff, very similar. However, we're not looking at like a timeline here or a grid where we can see these MIDI notes or these pads being played in. This is the window that you get. It gives us some information of our BPM, etc., etc. But what you get are these like little chunks, little buckets, I think someone referred them to at one point down the left hand side and there are 16 of those and what they act as they are essentially undo points so let's say we're you know this is our pattern we're recording it now and we've got you know say we've got some chops on here that we're playing over a drum loop the sp considers every button press as like an action so when i press them if you see as i'm pressing these pads these little like buckets or these little slots are now filling up and if i want to undo those I can do shift, pattern select, and undo. So I have that control and that option to say, oh, you know, made a bit of a mistake there. I don't want those. I want to come back and undo those functions. And that's okay. But of course, when you think about the amount of control you get inside of Koala, compared to this, this is definitely more limited. We're not able to go in and shift notes around or like mess about that we can with Koala. So I definitely think Koala wins in that sort of aspect. The other thing to bear in mind is that those functions and this undo function that you get inside of here is only available while we're still in this mode and I can stop it so I can kind of go into like a rehearsal so you know I'm trying to work out the chops before I play them in I can still do all of my undoing but as soon as I've committed to this like this is going to keep recording but when I'm done I can you know I can press exit and that is now recorded my pattern here I can stop the pattern but I no longer have the ability to go in and undo any of those steps. If I go even into pattern edit here, I can't go back to that pad and access those undo features. So once this is done, it's done. It's not like Koala where you can go back and make some edit and, you know, do some changes. The editing functions that we get here are simply to like change like loop length and stuff like that. It's all handy enough, um, but it's not the same as the editing abilities that you get for sequencing inside of Koala. Now, the reason I said it goes back and forth for me, when it gets to building a track and sequencing something out here, there are few different ways to do it in Koala and I know one of the things that people are hoping for in a Koala update is maybe slightly better control of using one sequence letting that play and then I want to play my next sequence and the next one and I'm doing it in a kind of live fashion maybe I'm trying to record this whole track out whatever I'm doing with it this is a little tricky I find it tricky myself sometimes you've got to get the timing of moving between sequences just right uh, in order to you know get it where you want and a lot of the time what I end up doing is treating one of these sequence windows like my track where I'm going to build it and I drag my sequences in add to the end and I build a track that way so I just have like a little idea of what I'm going to do with it beforehand and then use building blocks to put it all together then record it out. The SP has a really nice function for that because what it allows is like pattern chaining and pattern sequencing which you can kind of automate so if we've got a bunch of patterns, if we go back to our pattern select, let's say we had all of these filled up with all different patterns, I can work out an order that I want and I can actually automate that inside of the SP404 to play in the sequence that I want, resample it out and do it that way. So I think that function is better inside of the SP404. Also, let's say we just got some pads here and we're playing like a live set with our pads and our different points of you know our track. It works very similar to Ableton. So I press this one, it will play for whatever the length of this particular thing is if it's four bars two bars or whatever then when i want to press my next pad it waits until this one is finished and then starts playing the next one in sequence can't do that inside of koala so i think sequencing is a little bit of you know this has some really great functions and this has some really great functions so i think that does us for sequencing i don't think there's anything else i want to mention here let's move on to the next features so now i want to talk about the effects section on both of these i'm not going to go through demonstrating all the effects you can see that on plenty of other people's youtube videos i just want to talk about the comparison between the two units what we get inside of koala is 60 really nice effects very good got no problem with them if there was a clear winner for certain sections in this video i am going to say that i think the sp wins hands down mainly because one we've got x amount of effects so we've got a page here if we scroll through 
I've got 16 effects on this page, I've got 16 on the next page, and then another four. You've got no end of effects inside of here. And also the way those effects are applied, just for baking them into samples and stuff, it's just easier than Koala. Koala's effects are amazing, and they affect like your kind of like master group channel. You can do a little bit of like holding and resampling to bake some effects to, you know, individual pads and stuff. But the way the SP404 handles that is way more sophisticated. We have output bus that we can select we can choose to put effects onto just one pad and all that kind of stuff there's really a lot you can get into as far as the effects are concerned so a pretty quick one for effects that's all i'm going to talk about we'll get into sample chopping next okay then let's take a look at the sample chopping on both devices so overall it's pretty neck and neck for me with these we have uh, you know a sample editing window and the big key difference is you know you're using a touch screen to slide your fingers around it's a pretty speedy way of doing things when you're on the sp you start using these rotary knobs i think the learning curve on that is probably a little steeper but i imagine and i've seen people who are you know very um proficient at using one of these sp404s and they can slice samples in seconds because they're you're just so comfortable with using these rotaries to get your start and end points and zooming in and chopping and all that kind of thing so i wouldn't let that put you off if you think that this is going to be you know a lot quicker i actually think it's just time spent with each device as to you know how quick you can be it like chopping samples up we also have all the auto chopping features in both so of course inside of koala uh, we do tools and auto chop and we can do by the transient we can do it equally we can do lazy mode choose the choke groups one shot all of that same functionality is inside of the sp i believe there are probably a few few more features overall again on paper the sp404 has like a few extra features for like yeah uh, a few of these different uh, options sample chopping is kind of the same as a couple of little tools in there but like i've always said koala also has uh you know the option to split stems and do a few other things just depends on your workflow and what you need but yeah visually and how you kind of manipulate the samples very kind of similar we have this screen here we have the, you know, the slicing screen here. Auto chop inside of the SP is just a case of shift and then you're into chopping mode and we hit the menu and we can do our marks or the chops as they call them. You know, they call them marks in here. Uh, we can do it by the time division. We can do it by level, transient, same thing. And we can set parameters for all of that. So yeah, very, very similar, I think, on the sample chopping front. In terms of like little extra tools, the SP has a nice one because if you have a sample on a pad like this, but what this number represents is the BPM for that particular sample. And what you can do is you can actually analyze a single pad. So say you've got a drum loop on a pad. Maybe you've just created a drum loop by like resampling it and then cropping it down. You can actually get the SP404 to analyze the BPM of that sample. And the other thing that you can do is on any sample pad here, I can do beat sync and it is going to sync the BPM of that particular pad, that particular sample to the main project tempo or even the bank tempo. So yeah, there are a couple of little extras on the sp404 that are nice touches but that's generally the differences between sort of sample chopping there not a lot in it i would say so now let's take a look at time stretching on both devices both have good time stretching like algorithms uh, you'll get some pretty good results it's not something i use a lot but they are very capable of doing that if we take a look at koala you've got this stretch button inside of the edit window and of course you can jump in and change your algorithm you can change the you know, like duration and all that kind of stuff a similar story inside of the sp404 as long as you're on a pad i touched upon it very briefly before in the sample chopping little uh, section and that was simply the what i like about the sp is that you get a visual uh, representation every time you touch a pad tells you the tempo of that particular pad or the BPM and you can reanalyze it and do stuff like that just to make sure that it's nice and accurate but when we click on one like this and say we go into like pitch and speed we get our same options here and just like with Koala where you can once something is time stretched you can play around with the pitch depends on the algorithm that you're using if we say we use modern here once that is stretched I can come in and play around with like pitch now this does a similar thing the algorithms are kind of selectable um so we can use like this vinyl mode which just acts like standard pitch inside of here it's not really time stretched at all it just means that as we pitch a sample down it's going to adjust the speed but if we go in and change the settings inside of here i can set this with a couple of different algorithms and essentially what happens is when i change the pitch it will maintain the speed so that of course is say it was like a loop and you just wanted to get that to sync up with something else 
then you can play around with the pitch of it and change it without affecting the actual overall speed of it. So, you know, time stretching in its most simplest form. A uh, couple of different algorithms on the SP404. They work, you know, slightly better depending on what you're trying to do. Same as with Koala. It's got one for beats or one for, you know, like trying to do kind of retro sound and all that kind of stuff. Again, touched upon it in sample chopping very quickly, but with a pad like this inside, if we come out of this window, we've got 85 BPM here. If I do beat sync on any of these pads, any of these samples, these loops, whatever they are inside of the SP, it automatically does a bit of BPM syncing there to get that to fit with our global BPM. And the other thing to bear in mind when we're talking about tempo and BPM is that the clever thing with the SP404 is that you can change your tempo by the bank as well. You can set the tempo as like a global tempo, like you can do inside of Koala, where you've got an overall tempo here, BPM. I can do that to just a bank. So if you're doing like a live performance and you've got like a 90 BPM track that you've kind of arranged here and 170 over here, you can do that. You can have two different BPMs that you can like switch between. So that's very, very clever that you can set it by there. So yeah, I wouldn't say one of these devices kind of, you know, outshines over the other. I think they're both about equal in that Department. Maybe just a couple more features on the SP404 that you can play around with, like the BPM sync and stuff like that. But again, overall, could you get the job done in Koala? Absolutely. You can time stretch and do all the things that you need to do. So next up, we're going to look at the pads. So as far as the pads go, there's not a lot in it. It's kind of apples and oranges, really, simply because you're talking about a digital screen versus like a hardware sampler. I prefer the hardware sampler because it's like real pads and that kind of rubbery feel. It's just nice. However, the pads on Koala are like really, really good, really sensitive. No problems playing with them at all. The SP404 gives us options if we do shift and pad settings. We can change the curve type, the threshold. We can do all kinds for the sensitivity of these things. So yeah, more options. But again, to play devil's advocate, you don't really really need to adjust the koala pads they are so good as they are so you know you can take that for what it is now the other thing to mention if we come out of here a couple of things that the sp404 does that is more sophisticated than koala is that we have the ability to link pads so that we can set one pad to trigger multiple pads do a couple of things like that that's pretty cool the other thing that we can do which you can't do in koala so so you've got a sample like this and you do auto chop and i chop this thing into you know a bunch of pieces whatever it is. Whenever I'm chopping something inside of Koala, I always have to be wary of my BPM first. So usually I just play around with the sample, work out if I want to pitch it down a bit, chop it up, only because I know once it's chopped and it's onto my pads, I'll have to come in manually and then readjust that pitch. Say I make a mistake or I just want to play, you know, move them all around a little bit, try them like all pitched up. There's no current way to do that across all of the samples inside of Koala. Whereas with the SP404, you can do exactly that. I can split my chops and I can do the same thing if I look at the pitch and speed. I can pitch my sample before I've chopped it. But once it is chopped and it's across all of my pads, I can do shift, I think, is it remain. It's one of the combinations, but that will allow me to adjust the shift knob and it will edit every single one of those pads within that bank, which is, yeah, it's super handy. And that actually applies to things like, how do we do it? If we do shift and envelope, we can do like our attack and release like you can do inside of Koala here. I can do the same here. I can adjust this like attack and release sort of slope, but I can do that to multiple pads exactly the same time. So if you want to just add like a little fade in on all of your pads, I don't have to manually do every single one like I would inside of Koala. I can just do that using like this group editing feature. So again, the SP404 comes out a little bit on top there. If you want to talk about workflow and what saves you time, that saves me a hell of a lot of time. Now, another Another feature that we should look at with both of these devices is the ability to manipulate your samples in some kind of melodic way. And with Koala, what you get is this kind of piano here. And if we click on the piano and then choose a pad, it will allow us to manipulate that sample. In this case, we can do it like across a sort of chromatic keyboard, a very sort of standard fashion. And we can unlock it and we can move up and down like the octaves. And also you can choose a scale. So there's a bunch of different scale types. And also inside of here, we have note repeat. So we can do like triplets and all those kind of things and just get like notes to roll, which is really handy. And also there is like a grid function, which is kind of similar to the keyboard. It just allows you to play around with like the scale and the pitch and tone of a sample, which is really, really fun. Now with the SP404, we have something similar. If we do shift and go into chromatic mode, whatever sample we have selected that we're currently working on, we can then play up and down. And it's probably acting kind of similar to the grid that we've got here. And we can just use our enter uh, knob here to go up and down the octaves and change that. 
And also we have the ability to click on this enter button here and we can also just change the scale type so we can get, you know, uh, minor scales and major scales, all of that kind of good stuff. So they both work in a very similar way. Obviously you don't get kind of the standard typical like keyboard layout that you would inside of Koala, which is a really nice feature if you're, you know, particularly into playing keys. However, if you had a MIDI controller with keys enabled and linked to your SP404, you could still do the same thing. It's just, yeah, it's a slightly different way of going about it. So those are the two different ways that you can manipulate your audio in a sort of melodic fashion. Now in terms of beat repeats you can do that kind of thing inside of the SP as well. As we said before here we've got note repeat where we can get triplets and we can do all of that kind of stuff. There are a few different ways that you can do that inside of the SP4 and I'm not going to get into all of them now but just be aware that you can do that and you can play around with the notes and put in triplets and whatever it is that you want to do. So next up let's look at importing. Now again with importing, I don't think there's a big difference between the two devices. The SP404 of course relies upon an SD card for like internal samples. Now I'm kind of doing the same thing with my Koala sampler because when I go into samples here and I look through, I'm actually using an external SD card running through my hub to bring those samples in. So actually very, very similar. And they both seem to have a little bit of like a slow start sometimes when you first boot up the device. I find when I press this, you'll see it takes a minute sometimes to just get the files up and going. And if we do the same in here, if I go to uh, shift and then import, I can obviously import from like my SD card. And if I click this to begin, you'll notice that it has a little bit of time as well. So I wouldn't say either was particularly faster. It's the same deal about kind of being able to scroll through your folders. Wouldn't say there was much in that. I do the same in here. I just need to select and then go to my samples folder. And I can choose the same things, try and organize them well on the SD card so that, you know, makes your workflow nice and easy. And, you know, I pick a folder and I come through and as I scroll through these, it just auditions them for me. And inside of Koala, it's the same deal. We can just, you know, open up a folder, click a sample to listen to it and scroll through, load them up. The SP404 gives me the option to choose the destination pad of where I want to put that sample, which is quite nice, but there isn't a huge amount in it. I think you might be able to like batch import samples to uh, pads as well, but I can't remember just now. Again, I wouldn't say there was a huge amount between the two devices. One thing, of course, that Koala has that the SP404 doesn't is the ability to sample from from YouTube and Spotify within the device, which makes it really handy. If you want to start bringing all your external things in through Spotify or YouTube and stuff like that, you're going to need a device connected to the SP404. So keep that in mind. Koala's got that amazing function of being able to just record the screen and turn a YouTube video into a, you know, a piece of audio that we can slice up and import. Next up, let's take a look at the individual features that each device has. So what do these two devices do differently from each other? The first one that I can think of is that the SP404, if we press these two buttons, has a dedicated DJ mode, which is pretty sophisticated. It does quite a lot. You can bring your samples in, you can headphone cue, you've got volume sliders, all that kind of stuff. And you can sync BPMs and things like that, I'm pretty sure. So if you're looking for something in terms of doing like live performance, this would be a good tool for that. However, you know, if you're working on an iPad or whatever the device is that you've got Koala loaded into, that doesn't mean that you can't just use another app for that kind of thing still in the same device you can also set up koala as like a dj set if you wanted there's definitely ways you could do that just working off of the pads and using the volume sliders and stuff you could work it out now another unique feature for the sp404 is the ability to record in a step sequencer so when we're in pattern select mode here if we want to record a new sequence using the step sequencer we just hit record and like we did before we'll get an option to choose the pad or the destination where we want to record our new sequence i'll choose four in this case Case, and we get the same options that we had before when we wanted to do some like real-time recording and if we press remain we can switch between the modes here and we can change our BPM we can change our bar length in this case we'll just set it to one bar we can apply some shuffle or some quantization and then we can start inputting some of our samples into this step sequencer now when we press record you will notice the steps starting to come through and it just repeats around now that's going to depend on your bar length that you've set in this case for one bar it's just going to come through and it is of course playing to our BPM our tempo that we've set. Now when you want to choose the samples, you just press the sub pad, choose the sample that you're working with. So let's say it was a kick drum or something like that. I can choose the kick drum, let go, 
and then wherever I put these is going to be where the kick drums play and of course I can just go back choose more samples whether it's more drums or chops or whatever it happens to be and we can apply that to our step sequence so that's a really cool function inside of the SP404 and unfortunately Koala doesn't possess anything like that at the moment doesn't mean that in a future update that won't come but for now the SP404 has the ability to do step sequencing which Koala doesn't. Now another unique feature for the SP404 is 16 velocity and I believe this was like an MPC thing or that's certainly where I first heard about it and what you do is you do shift and you do 16 velocity and essentially whatever sample you had loaded up onto the pad that you were working on is now spread across the 16 pads and you're able to play it with velocity changes so essentially volume changes and that's great for like you know go putting in hi-hats and stuff like that if you want some like rhythm to them and some life not everything has to be at exactly the same volume so that's another great unique feature for the SP404. Now as far as Koala Sampler is concerned, that has some unique selling points as well. Of course I've touched upon those throughout this video, but let's just recap a little bit. And the main one would be that you can split stems inside of Koala, so great for remixes, you can pull drums out, you can turn it into an acapella, you can do all of those kind of things. And also you have the ability to sample with inside of the unit from places like YouTube and Spotify, things like that. So each has its own unique advantages, it's just going to depend on your workflow as to which suits you more. Next up, let's take a look at our export options. So when it comes time to export your audio out of either device, you have a lot of different options, particularly with Koala. I think it has the slight upper hand because as we go into export here, we can do by the sample, by the project, you know, by the beat, by the sequence. We can do just the stems. We can do like an Ableton Live set, an Ableton Live drum rack. When it comes to the SP404, we can export back to our SD card. And I think you get more options now with the SP404 if you use the desktop app. So there is a dedicated application that you can get for your desktop laptop that allows you to connect the SP404 and actually transfer information, uh, not even just in terms of like its file structure, but actually directly edit information. So I can load up a sample. You'll be able to see all the samples on your pads on the application. And I can actually manipulate those samples via the laptop and they will be edited and updated on the machine itself. So that opens up a world of options for kind of export. So just a few final thoughts here to end this video. Now, a lot of the discussion, as I said, I've seen online about Koala versus the SP404. I do think it's a little bit apples and oranges. This is a host device, whatever that happens to be, with a software application that does an amazing job and you can make amazing beats. This is a hardware sampler dedicated for its job and you can make amazing beats. Surely the end product is the key thing here. And you could do that on machine, you could do it in Ableton, you could do it with an MPC or FL Studio. I don't think it matters ultimately. But I understand that with a lot of people, Koala is an easy access point. It's a cheap app and most people will have some kind of device they could run it on. Whereas to get the SP, you've got to go out and you've got to spend a bunch money. My advice, if you can do it, would be to maybe go to like a guitar center or, you know, there's a bunch of music shops that sell DJ equipment. A lot of those will let you try products before you buy them. You could take some samples in with you on an SD card or something, just load them up or just use the ones that are built in and get a feel for this thing. And that's the bit that I can't get across to you in this video. I can tell you I like the tactile feel of this. I think it feels great as a hardware sampler. There is a magic to this that the iPad doesn't have. But equally, I love Koala. I love the SP. And my goal is to use both of them. I plan on keeping both of them. I want to take the stems out of this and put it into this and vice versa. I could run the audio from koala into the sp and use all of the sp's effects and all of that kind of stuff so i don't want to think of them as separate devices in a sense of which is the king because everything's got its flaws whether it's a, the daw you use or the hardware sampler or software whatever it is everything is flawed so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about these don't necessarily feel like these two are the only options and for whatever reason it has to be one of these or you know you know what i'm trying to say so I'm going to end it there. It's been a long video, hopefully useful to you guys. As I said, I didn't want to go into every single last little detail. At some point in the future, when I'm feeling more confident with the SP, I will begin to make some tutorials with my personal like workflow and the things that I think are like useful on it. But that won't come until I'm completely confident with this device. With Koala, I felt confident that I could give you guys a tutorial series that would be useful and clear. I'm still just getting to know this guy. So once that happens, I'll jump onto that and I'll add that to obviously you know my playlist but for now I hope you've enjoyed this I'm going to sign off and rest my voice because I think it's getting hoarse from all the talking I've done today and I will see you guys in the next video take care